The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 19th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve e. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Uh, more important than that, though, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Now send it to Steve at TFNN.com, and inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A mixed bag out here. Dow's up 258. S&P's down 17. NASDAQ is flat. Russell's up 9. Semis are up 11. Tranny's up 201. We've got a lot to take a look at. You've got gold trading out at 1841. That's up 25 bucks. Silver's trading at 2189, up 35 cents. Lights we crude, 110.27. That's up 70 cents. Lights, uh, you've got the 30-year treasury up 15 ticks, 140.25. And natural gas is basically flat at 837. Lead the charge dollar-wise to the upside. Booking Holdings, 63 bucks, 3%. Mercado Libre, 54 bucks, 7%. Shopify, 41, 12%. AutoZone, 31, about 2%. Synopsis, up 32 bucks, that's nearly 12%. To the downside, Bright Green Corporation is awfully red today. It's down 65%, and I do mean awfully red. That's off 31 buckaroonies. Google's down 23, Broadcom's down 19, 3%. You've got Northrop Grumman off 11 bucks, nearly about 3%. Lockheed Martin is off about 3% or 11 bucks. So there's movers and there are shakers. But where we're going to begin is really the most important set of charts for you to take a look at, for us to take a look at, with regard to what the market's intentions are. And that comes from the 120-minute time frames for each of the equity futures contracts, each which have Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom signals. That's the black diagonal line that you see followed up with a bullish reversal candle, and that confirms the bottom. And then what you do is you go take a look at where is resistance. Well, turns out inside the ES Mini, price closed below the bottom of its bullish structured profile for more than two consecutive sessions. We just need two for a confirmation. That says counter trend rallies would stop at the center of their profile. And if you take a look at today's action, that is exactly what we have. That makes that 39.28 area the real key level. If you see a close above 39.28, odds favor, you're going to go see a run to 39.94. That's the top of the profile. Now, right now, price is below the bottom of the profile. So that says we go, we attack the swing point low. Well, in essence, that's what it's doing. It's attacking the high of that swing point low. Now, if it can close back inside there, there being the price point of uh, 38.93, then that says we go explore the bottom of that level. But as we speak right now in this two-hour time frame, bar will complete at 2 p.m. So you could be getting a test rejection of that swing point with the market getting ready to catapult its way to the upside. But first, you've got to get a close above 39.28. If you take a look at the NQ, we have the exact opposite. What do you mean, Stevie, the exact opposite? It has a bearish structured profile. And that says that resistance would be at the top of the profile. If you take a look at where we found resistance so far today, the top of that profile. You think these profiles are helpful? Extremely helpful. And that's at 12.063. I could not be able to share with you what the market's intentions are without these tools out there. Now, what we have is price testing the bottom 
of that profile, and that is a level of support. If it fails to hold that area, which is about the 11,874 range, I'll tell you exactly where it is. It's at 11,871. If price fails to hold that level, then you should see price get down and at least test that swing point low. Dow equity future contract. It is the weak link out here. But based upon what you and I just looked at inside the ES Mini, you tell me where the counter trend rally on any rally inside the Dow would end. You're exactly right. Excellent. Great eyes out there. And that's at 31,504. So that's the level to be watching inside the YM. If you see a close above that, it doesn't matter whether it's during today's trading session. It could be this evening. Or there could be new profiles to form, but right now that's not what we have out there. If you see it close about 31,504, that says we head to 31,977. That's not the message right now. But now you know what to look for and what to observe. In the case of the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 actually in that 10 o'clock session closed above the top of its profile. Very much like the, Rus uh, like the NQ out there. Well, no, it's really it's a bullish structured profile. And really, the mere fact that the Russell closed above the center, got up to the top, closed above the top out there, the Russell is the strong dog here. The Russell is the one that is trying to lead the markets higher. Quite frankly, in a counter trend rally, you want the Russell and the NQ to be the two charts that would do that. We don't have any confirmation of that just yet, but you now know what levels to be looking at. In the case of the Russell, that level is going to be 1787. We see it close above that, then we're looking at 1836.40. Now, we're going to share a lot of other charts here the next 48 minutes or so. But these, this set of charts right here, go ahead, grab a copy of it. This is the most important set of charts for you to be able to identify what the market is going to communicate to us during the day and at least into the evening. Now, let's go switch back and take a look at some of our other charts out here. We'll begin by taking a look at the index ETFs and see what they're doing out here. So to do that, we're going to go over to this set of charts right here. There we go. So if we take a look, we'll start with these spies. The spies yesterday moved lower into the swing point from the trading session of May the 12th. That swing point had 125 million shares. Yesterday's volume was slightly lighter, volume 117 million shares. Where the volume was really light is inside the NQ. The NQ moving down into its, uh, not the NQ, but the Qs themselves. The swing point from May the 12th, volume of 120 million Yesterday, you moved down with 79 million shares. Now, in the case of both the SPY and the Qs right now, just looking at those upper panels, we don't have any kind of tests or rejections. We just have price trading into swing point, key swing points, with light volume. If you take a look at the volume today, you got 52 million shares. We're four hours basically into the uh, trading session here. It doesn't appear that we're going to get more than 125 million shares. But until we get a rejection of price, that's either a move below 385.15 and a close above it on lighter volume or a close above 395.80 with lighter volume. That would be your test and rejection. The levels to be watching in the queues are 284.94 to the downside, 295.75 to the upside. Now, the Dow Diamonds are testing their May 12 swing point on much lighter volume. That swing has 6.7, we'll call it 7 million shares. We're testing it with 2.3. So if the Dow Diamonds close about 312.53 today, you will have a test and rejection of a key swing point. And that says you can't bust them down. Price will try to bust them to the upside. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So when we looked at that 120-minute time frame chart for the Russell 2000, I believe we mentioned that that is the strong dog out here. When you take a look at the index ETF, the IWM, you get that same picture. Price has not even been able to make its way back to that May 12th swing point, which uh, the top of it is at 174.34, doing 21 million shares today. The volume on that swing point is 52 million shares. So again, light volume. Now let's go dig under the covers here and take a look at what's going on inside under the covers for the sectors with inside the S&P 500. There are two that have tests and rejections of the May 12th swing point. Those two being the XLY. So if the XLY closes today above 142.03, um, it's going to uh, then reject a swing point with lighter volume. So you might go take a look at the instruments that make up the XLY for a possible trade. Now, again, in the XLY, it has a, this is the right, here, let me just expand out the chart. There we go. The XLY has a bearish structured, bullish structured daily profile. That price is now below for two consecutive days. So what you have to realize is if you take a trade inside the XLY, that your resistance level, your counter trend move level, is 150.38. So you'd want to watch that. If price can get above 150.38, then you're going to on its way. That is on its way to 158.73. But so far, that's a sector that is the uh, consumer discretionary sector that is giving you a buy signal. Let's go from the upper left. Well, we'll skip the spies. We already took a look at that. The case of the XLK, it would need to close above 133.40 today to then give you that test and rejection of its swing point. Or it needs to push down below 128.43 and close above that level. The XLV, the XLV is giving you a test and rejection on, a, on, uh, on lighter volume. Now, it's trading right now 127.59. It requires a close above 127.32. If you get that out there, then likely what the XLV will do is move up to its descending trend line or about the 130.86 level. We already covered the XLY. The XLF needs either a close above 33.36 or a move down below 32.41 and then back above it to get some type of test and rejection. So right now it's just kind of in no man's land, as is the XLK, as is the SPY itself. The XLC, the communication sector, if it can close above 58.38, then you will have a test rejection of that May 12 swing point. The XLI, the industrial sector, is testing and rejecting that swing point. As long as it closes above 90.19, you then have a buy signal there. Now, that buy signal 
should take price up to, well, at least 93.71, I'd say 96.34. The uh, consumer staples area needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom there. Otherwise, price will head lower, move down to its next A to B equals CD price projection level, and that's at 68.76. The energy sector, strong light bull. In the case of the real estate sector, a close above 42.04 today would be a test and rejection of its May 12th swing point. The other option is testing 41.37 the downside, closing back above that. Doesn't seem, seem likely that that's going to occur. Utility sector just consolidating. It's been consolidated for the most part for a period of a series of a couple weeks with inside its swing point. It is not May 12th for it. It is May the second. And then finally, the uh, uh, the material sector out here. You've got so uh, actually since uh, since about an hour ago, we've got several. I, I said there were two sectors that right now we're testing, rejecting their uh, a key swing point. That's 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 not correct. You now have the uh, material sector that's doing the same. It's going to have light volume. So a close above 8205 would be a bullish signal there and suggest to move up to the 8416 level. So right now we got the XLB, XLRE is really close. You've got the XLI, so that's three, and you've got the XLY, so you've got uh, four of uh, of these uh, sectors here that are giving you the uh, hey, we're not ready to head lower. In fact, we're probably going to do the exact opposite. But you want the indices, or we certainly want those equity future contracts to start trading and close above those key resistance levels on the 120-minute time frame to give us that signal. If we don't get that signal. And we don't have that signal, and that means we don't have a signal or a conclusive signal to uh, suggest what the market's real intentions are. Okay, where do we want to go next? That's a great question. So we we'll take care of those things. What else is it that I can share with you that would be helpful? And I don't know the answer to that question right now. So let's um, – there are no requests. I don't believe there's anything inside the Tiger's Den. So uh, – Let's see what we can. Uh, let's let's go take a look at gold. You've got gold moving higher, up 26 bucks. Let's go get a feel for what that is doing. So let's get over to our and to get a feel for what it's doing. Right first, the most important feel, so to speak, is this chart. What's gold doing in all the major currencies? Well, if we take a look at gold in dollars, we know that's trading higher. If we take a look at gold in euros, it's higher. Gold in yen, it's higher. Gold in pounds is higher. So the uh, price move that we see inside of gold, there's no reason for it not to continue higher. So the question should be, continue higher to where? Excellent question. For that, we go take a look at the uh, June contract out here. The June contract has a bearish structured profile. And that suggests that price will go target the 1861-1872 level. I don't know if we'll take that out, but that becomes the range where price should head to because that's where the sellers are located. They're certainly lined up at 1872, but we have sellers also in the 1861 area. So that's what's going on with gold. Let's go take a look at high-ho silver. As we take a look at silver out here, we'll see in the case of silver, let's get over to this set of charts here. You're inside a bullet. So this has a, a TD9 count bottom, um, and you're inside a bullish structured profile. You're above the center of that profile. That suggests a move up to 2276 out there. Now, the real resistance level for Goldilocks, if you look at the weekly chart, please look at the weekly chart, and I'll ask you the question, where is the real counter trend rally resistance level for it? Where is it? Where is it? Yep, 2312. That's because it's a bullish structured profile. We're now the third week below that level. And if it's only a counter trend move, that's where price would find resistance at the 2312 level. We've got a question inside the Tiger's Den. It is from Flip. And Flip wants to go take a look at uh, ARKK, one of Kathy Wood's funds out there. So let's go take a look at our three panel set of charts out here, ARKK, and go see what we've got there. And you say, please take a look at it. So let's get rid of the three drive to a bottom pattern that it had there or was forming. And uh, so now we take a look at ARKK. Let me second here to get rid of, just clean this chart up just a tad since we were last here. Okay. So we've gotten, the question would be, is there some kind, let me just expand out the chart. Is there some, oh man, did I really do that? I did. ARKK. Okay. So the question is, is there some kind of uh, A to B equals CD pattern? Well, most certainly there is. We could draw that in here for you. So the A point is all the way up here. This is on the trading day of 
February 16, 2021. Your B point is going to be the low from May 13th. Your C point is going to be the high of June 30th, 2021. So in essence, price has gotten down close to the 1 to 1.618 level. You've got a bullish reversal candle that formed a few days ago. You're inside of a, a daily profile. So the resistance zone here is 4567. The support zone is at 3686. Is there anything more to ARKK? Well, when we get back to this break, let's go take a look at it. What do we have on the weekly chart down here? What is that low from last week? Hint, hint. We have someone that's usually inside the tiger's den, and his call sign begins with the letter, or begins with the name Peak. And what follows that? Wave number seven. C Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So now we're taking a look at the uh, ARKK charts, the multi time frame charts, that is. So if we look at that uh, flip, if you look at the monthly chart, what you're going to see is that this month, the month of May, is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count. That says we've got a completed TD9 count bottom at the breakout level of support of 39.41. Now, as you and I know, you can get a lower low on the bar following bar number nine. But right now, the monthly chart is saying, hey, I've got a bottom signal. Now, the month is not over, so something could change. You'd have to get a close, quite frankly, above 75.43. You're at 43 bucks. That's not likely to happen by month's end to negate what I just said. So it looks like you've got a valid TD9 count bottom at the breakout level of support, which is really what you want from a monthly time frame. Then you go to the weekly. Is there a message of a bottom on the weekly? Well, it turns out wave number seven, that's letter G out there. And as long as we don't get a lower low um, this week, 
then you've got a confirmed wave number seven. Now, what price would need to do on the weekly chart to suggest an intermediate term change in trend would be a close above that oscillator and change line. That's currently 47.11. But nonetheless, what you have here is a monthly bottom signal and a weekly bottom signal. And now we go take a look at the daily. We just did that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. And what price needs to do in order to confirm that it's ready to start moving higher is close above what? Close above where the sellers reside. Well, the sellers reside at the top of the profile. That's at 45.67. Now, I don't have the insight to know whether or not price will be able to do that, but that's what the signals are telling us, that ARKK is right now attempting to form a pretty solid bottom, monthly, weekly, and daily, and the daily would be confirmed with a close above 45.67. Let's not spend much time here taking a look at this set of charts, and instead, what I would suggest, Flip, and this is how I would handle this, where, where this is showing us bottom signals out there, I then go into the uh, individual components to see what are they communicating to us, right? You got to dig down deep into the uh, covers out here. So let me do that. Let me get that going. Give me just a moment to do that for you. So don't have many questions in here. So we're allowed, so we're able to do this. So that's a beautiful thing. So uh, let's start with the top eight holdings. Now, these may be slightly out of order. This is probably from last week when I went ahead and updated this. But Tesla is around the number one uh, waiting inside there. Now, as we take a look at Tesla, I don't have a bottom panel, a bottom, a bottom, bottom pattern out here for it. But when we come to Teladoc, we do. And Teladoc has a nice Rosemontum indicator signal. Now, right now, all you've got is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. What I would do, Flip, if I were you and you're interested in Teladoc, I'd go do like that multi time frame chart that we looked at, see what's going on in the monthly, the weekly, and so forth to get a signal. Roku has a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom signal. I would do the same there. The resistance level inside of Roku is between 99.93 and 110.56. Uh, ZM is at um, the ZM. Zoom? <laughs> Is that is I think that is ZM is zoom out here. That has a Rosemontum indicator bottom. Price consolidating with inside its uh, daily profile. Needs a close above 100.25. But as opposed to taking a trade in ARKK, I consider Teladoc, Roku, or Zoom. Let's take a look at Coin out here. So for Coin, I don't know if there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. I have to go back and do that. I'm not going to do that work right now. So I'd have a bottom signal that clearly sticks out in it or EXAS or Square or U out here. So, so those which are part of the eight top weighted stocks inside there, Flip, you're better off taking a look at Teldoc, Roku, and Zoom. You know, in other words, create your own little version of an ETF out there. Now, there's eight more. This, is not, this not, does not include all of the instruments, but we'll go, to, we'll go over and take a look at the next eight out here for you. Give us a moment. And this is helpful because we get to take like at least daily time frame of a number of different charts out here. So now you got the path of, res of, of least resistance. That's our polar bear, David White, P-A-T-H. Who knew that he had a, a stock named after him? It's UI Path, I believe, is the stock. I don't know if it has a, a bottom signal or not. I mean, in other words, it doesn't have one of my patterns. Maybe there's an A to B equals CD. Maybe not. However, on NTLA, you've got a Rosemont indicator bottom. If price closes about 51.48, you're off to 59.82. Twilio, a uh, Rosemont indicator bottom. Spotify, Rosemont indicator bottom. Beam, not so fast. No bullish reversal candle just yet. Um, uh, DraftKings, Rosemont indicator bottom signal. Shopify, Rosemont indicator bottom signal. So flip. The better instruments, as opposed to, I know you're focused on A. ARKK out here, uh, but I would instead look at the instruments that are giving you the best bottom signal. If you're thinking of taking a long position in it, and instead just take, you know, maybe it's a, a half a percent risk in each of them, or a quarter percent risk in each of them, or something along those lines. But what you really should do with each of those instruments, that includes everybody else that's listening in, is take those with the daily bottoming signals and do some type of multi time frame look to get a better view as to what they're communicating to you. So hope that helps you out, uh, Flip. Thanks so much for the request out there. And uh, uh, we do have a question that has come in, and it is from Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at the googly one. So if you give me a moment, we're going to get back to our multi time frame set of charts out here. We'll put in the Google. Uh, symbol, and we'll read Hector's question, which goes like this. Happy Thirsty Thursday. Here's to you. In fact, I'm going to take a little swig. 
because I am thirsty. But an ice cube slipped right through that little crack. And I didn't want to chew it on the air out there. And I don't have anything against chewing ice cubes. The question goes like this. Google on a weekly. And the question is light volume there. So, okay, so if we're going to go check out volume. We've got to go to my black background chart. So give me a moment. We'll flip the uh, screens out here. And we'll go back to the white ones. Um, so let's get over to what Hector's talking about. And volume so far this week is about 4.4 million shares. We loaded up another wagon. Please review for us the A to B equals CD downside for buy the D point pattern. Well, you've got, and so in the case of Google, what you're waiting for, what Stevie would be waiting for, is a bullish reversal candle. Yes, you have the A to B equals CD pattern. But what's missing from this, Hector and Patty, is a bullish reversal candle. Just because a candle's green doesn't mean it's bullish. Just because it's red, the body of the candle does not mean it's bearish out there. And we do not have a bullish reversal candle for the weekly time frame. So that says, unless we see some other kind of bottoming signal like wave number seven or TD9 count, I would be hesitant to make a, the load the wagon decision based upon the weekly time frame chart. Now, Maybe we'll see something on the daily chart out there, and it also has an A to B equals CD. It's the same A. No, it's a different A to B equals CD pattern out here, and that's okay. Um, but what it also does not have, as prices move lower, is some type of bullish reversal candle. So both on the daily time frame and on the weekly time frame, we do not have a confirmation. Now, price is pulling back to an area of support, or I should say a potential area of support. And that is the bullish structured area of its monthly time frame, which is in a range from 1959 to 2176 out there. That's a pretty good range. So let's go look at the white background charts. Hector and Patty, maybe we can find something there that's helpful uh, to us uh, for your trade and we begin by looking at the monthly chart do we have anything to help us we do not nothing more than what we looked at on the weekly time frame chart we already talked about the a to b equals cd you can see we don't have a bullish reversal candle this says google could be making a run for 2015. now 2187 is the 1 to 1.272 a to b equals cd so that could be another pit stop here on the daily time frame which you'd really love to see and maybe you get this tomorrow guys hector and patty You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, no bullish reversal candle. If you get that, then you're off to the races. Now, those races may stop when you get to 2375. That's where a counter trend move would end. But to get above 2375, you're up to the 2488 level. So, Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out with regard to Google. Best of luck to you on that trade. Hope great. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, back up, folks. So a couple of requests from some of our genders out here. We've got one dinner that is short. Uh, uh, short uh, Tesla. That is a uh, Rossi. Uh, you know, uh, a great uh, golf commentator out there, Rossi. Uh, what's his What's his What's his full name? Gosh darn. Retired or maybe passed. For uh, for all I know. Um, oh, I, we've got a caller on the line. So give me a moment here. We've got to go to uh, that. That is. Uh, what do we have? We've got Mike in Ormond Beach. Hey, Mike. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Hey, Steve. I'm doing pretty good. Uh on the SDS, do you think uh, we could get up there and tag that fifty twenty three again that we got uh, a couple of days ago? The SDS. So let me give me a second here. Let me change my screens for everybody out here. And uh, so you do know. Let me let me just take a look. See where we're where we're at. So give me a second here. No, nope, that's not what we want. We want the three panel. Okay, so the you know I'm gonna try to answer your question with regard to SDS, but we'll go back because this is a two-time I believe ETF. You know we really want to take a look at the spy. But your specific question again is what? Do you think we'll go back and tag that? I think it was fifty twenty-three we made. Um, ah, the May twelfth like a week ago. You know, so here's here's the deal. As long as price remains above 48.32, that's a real possibility. If price closes below 48.32 on the SDS, that's the top of its profile. Then, then not so sure. Okay. All right. Now let's go take a look at the uh, spy itself. So in the case of the spy, we'll put this up here on the uh, chart for the spy. So and this is why. So if you take a look, and this is really where I think you should be making your trade decisions from. Mike, with regard to the SDS, total different yeah. set of profiles. Obviously, they're opposite each other. But still, if we take a look at the SPY, the SPY is now trading above the bottom of that daily profile. And that's at 389.60. And as long as that level holds, and we are, you know, we pulled back yesterday into the uh, swing point for May 12th. We did it with light volume. We have what looks like even lighter volume today. And mm -hmm. so the, the buyers are lined up at 389.60. So if that level holds, look, it's not a guarantee that you can't bust through there. But based upon the volume metrics from yesterday, what we're looking at today out here, um, kind of iffy. Now, if at the end of the day, price closes below the bottom of that profile, and again, that number is 389.60, then I'd say the answer to your question leans more heavily to the yes side. But if it closes above it, uh, not so fast, not so certain that that's what it would do. Uh, and then what we really want to do, Mike, is go take a look at those intraday time frames, you know, for the uh, ES Mini uh, to get right. some type of feel for, mm -hmm. you know, what maybe they're signaling to us. Should I switch over and take a look at those charts? Yeah, that's what I usually use as my reference to ES. Okay. So let's go take a look at their charts and get a feel for what they're communicating to us. We'll begin just simply with the five-minute time frame chart. Not a whole lot there, but if you do get a close above 11.942, it suggests a move higher. Um, the 10-minute chart, not assisting us, but it does say if you move above 11.955, 11.954, it's moving higher. Uh, the 15-minute chart has a TD9 count, Rhodes momentum indicator, bottom out there. A close above 11.952 says you move to 12.055. Um, it really is, I just come back to this here, Mike, uh, the simplest thing is the single time frame. 
that is working for all four equity future contracts that is consistent is the two hour time frame. And the two hour okay. time frame chart here for the ES Mini said, ah, I've got the NQ up, my apology. I wasn't even paying attention. Now I'm gonna pay attention because I'm gonna switch back to take a look at the correct contract out there. Sorry about that. Um, just shows you that uh, I struggle to do two things at the same time. But still, the two hour time frame chart is the chart providing us with the best signals. And that's this, I maybe didn't catch the opening of the show, but each of the, each of the two hour time frame charts have roads momentum indicator bottoms. Each of okay. them this morning ran right up into resistance. And, and that, that's the beautiful thing is when you have clear resistance, then you know where to sell from, or if that resistance fails, that price is gonna move higher. In the case of the ES Mini, that level to be watching is 39.28. That is the center of its bullish structured profile for its 120 minute time frame. If price closes above that, then I would jettison that short position uh, inside the uh, being short the S&P 500, assuming it's just like a day-ish type trade or a very short-term trade out there. Uh, I've just price, been short-term trading everything. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. So I think that's what I would be looking for at day's end. If price remains below 39.11, then I don't have any reasons to suggest that you, at least from the two-hour time frame chart, to jettison that position out there. But back to your original question, you were looking at the SDS, you were looking for a support level. And I would say if the SPY closes above 389.60, it makes that trade a little bit suspect. All right. And thank you. Steve, you, you answered a very important question that I've always, uh, the, you said the two hour, uh, two hour chart seems to have the best uh, answer for the market direction. And I, I've, I've often wondered that because I use a lot of intraday charts, you know, from, you know, five minute, 10 minute, 15, 30. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you might have, a bottom signal on a 30 and a bottom signal on a 15, but you know, you might have opposite signals on different I, intraday. But sure. But allow, allow, allow me to clarify, allow me to clarify, Mike. And I don't, don't mean to interrupt you. I, I obviously I did, but when I say the 120 minute charts are the best chart time frame, what I mean is the best chart time frame right now. So right. I look at in markets like this, I look at all time frames for all four equity future contracts, trying to find okay. one time frame if there is one that is providing us with the best signal information. And to me, that's like be riding the waves. You know, I live on the right. water. You watch those waves come in. You know, they have a cycle. They have a set of patterns. Eventually, that pattern moves away. That means like in a stock trading, you're sometimes the time frame moves away. But right now, and I was able to identify early this morning, it was the two-hour time frame that was providing us with the best signals. And then we watched the price mark, the laboratory. We watched the price action out here. That was confirmed by that price action. And that's why I stick with that two-hour time frame right now to provide you with, uh, to provide you with the best signals. This will eventually go away. It could be tonight. It could be sometime tomorrow. But right now, Brian. these are the charts that I would be paying attention to. Okay? All right. Well, Steve, thanks so much for the parameters. And uh, sure, I appreciate everything you do for us. Thanks. Well, thank you, and I appreciate uh, your call. So uh, that was Mike in Ormond Beach out there. Now, I forget what I was looking at earlier. Um, what? Was I looking at something for someone out there? Oh, yeah. Was, I think it was a Tesla short. So let's go back to those charts. Um, hey, I, I, I'm pretty proud of myself that I was able to remember what it was that I was looking at. So let's go back to those multi time frame charts. Yeah, it is Tesla. Now, the question in Tesla was to be able to identify support out there. So there is one level of support that Tesla is trading into, and that is the center of its uh, monthly time frame out there, monthly time frame uh, 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 profile. So TSLA, I'm just going to get that on my other screen out there. Clearly read it for you. 686.28. So the support level for Tesla on a monthly basis is between 616 and 686. No bottom signal on the daily time frame. No bottom signal on the weekly time frame. The next level of support on the weekly time frame is 627.24 out there. So those are your levels of support inside of Tesla. And uh, we'll be right back.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, how about that, uh, how about that football game that uh, took place uh, last night on skates? in uh, Calgary out there. The score was 9-6. to six. I watch a lot of hockey games. I cannot remember seeing a game with a score of 9-6. to six. I know they've had, you know, plenty of them out there, but it's pretty unusual. Basically, there's no goaltending at 9-6 uh, to six a score out there. But uh, if you like uh, uh, goals out there, um, you know, then, then, then that was the game to uh, watch. So, you know, it's kind of like golf. You have a low score, you know, on one day. Next day you come back, you know, and you're like 10 strokes above where you were the day before. So uh, probably the uh, the game on Friday in Calgary. Calgary is such a beautiful city. I don't know if you've ever been up there. I think I mentioned I didn't have a store in Edmonton. And uh, oftentimes to get there, if I was flying out of uh, Salt Lake, you'd stop in Calgary and then you'd go off to uh, Edmonton out there. But just beautiful. Um, the uh, Calgary Stampede uh, that always begins July 1st. That is a uh, big party out there. But great, uh, great hockey. The question is here about Apple. And with regard to Apple, you know, it is looking just horrible. It's below all kinds of support levels. In fact, the next area of support for Apple is between the 12707 level, that's the TD9 count breakout area for the weekly time frame, and 12313, that's the TD9 count breakout level on the monthly time frame. The daily 
If it were to form some type of bullish reversal candle, then you would have a uh, buy the D point pattern. But we don't have that. Everything is below support out there. Looks like Apple wants to continue to move lower. So to uh, wrap up the uh, show, what are we going to do out here? I don't know. Let's go take a look and uh, see if there's anything uh, worthwhile to uh, mention to you. Give me a moment. Let's get back to these charts here. I, I, uh, index ETFs. Let's see what we've got. You know, you still have the Dow Diamonds testing, rejecting that key swing point of May 12th out there. Close above 312.53 on less than 6.7 million shares, and that's going to be easy to do today. That is a total test rejection. That's week. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. Hey, join me tomorrow, 8 o'clock sharp. I'll be recording tomorrow's show between 8 and 9. Have a terrific Thursday. <laughs>